Good evening all. Welcome to Corporate Scrutiny for the 25th of June 2024. Please be aware this meeting is being recorded for YouTube. Welcome to all members, which most of you are new, I believe, with the exception of Councillor Coates, who stays with us. Uh, he survived the, re the reorganisation. Um, so uh, thank you all for being here. Apologies for absence. Uh, I believe I have Ben Price. Um, I don't believe there's any more, no. unless anybody is aware. No, okay, so moving, uh, moving on to agenda item two, appointment of the vice chair of course. Can I nominate uh, Councillor Wells, please? So just to confirm that was Councillor Wells. Do we have a seconder for Councillor Wells? Who was it, sorry? Councillor Summers. Oh, Councillor Summers. Okay. Do we have any more nominations for the, for the Vice Chair? No? Okay. Would you like to raise your hand in support of Councillor Wales for Vice Chair Corporate Scrutiny? And that is unanimous. Thank you and congratulations. Are you okay staying there for the uh, continuation of the meeting? Yep. Next time you uh, get promoted to this side. <laughs> So um, good luck in a way. So uh, moving on to uh, agenda three, minutes of the previous meeting. Um, so unless anyone can say otherwise, I believe Council Coates uh, again attended last meeting, um, who is then here tonight. So um, do you want to move this, Councillor Coates? Are you in agreement with the minutes? Yes, I'm in agreement. <laughs> to confirm those minutes were held, uh, so the committee was held on the 22nd of April 2024. Okay, okay um, moving on again to agenda item four, declarations of interest. Does anybody have an interest they would like to declare? I take that as a no. Thank you. Agenda item five, chairs update. So, Firstly, wanted to thank the previous chair, uh, Councillor Daniel Cook, for his work and diligence over the year and robustly scrutinising me as part of the cabinet at the time, um, which, by the way, was always terrifying and fun at the same time, oddly enough. Uh, as, well as, as well as cabinet, council officers were vigorously questioned with many of the pertinent issues raised through the committee going on to directly support and help the lives of ordinary residents, so thank you. Uh, secondly, many of you are aware that I was previously on Cabinet and thus invited what seemed like uh, most of the scrutiny committees, I'd say. Uh, I guess, um, but it did mean I saw a lot of passionate conversations and I just wanted to highlight this. Um, and some that probably weren't so passionate but approaching, quite frankly, more closer to what I'd say is aggressiveness in nature. Um, and I think we do have to be careful and I wanted to bring it up. Um, at the start of this one. So it brings me to the Nolan Principles, which of course, as councillors, we subscribe to. Just want to bring your attention to, of course, leadership, and this states the following, holders of public office should exhibit these principles in their own behaviour and treat others with respect. They should actively promote and robustly support the principles and challenge poor behaviour wherever it occurs. So my request to members, is that while some of the issues raised here can be extremely emotive, uh, particularly on this uh, committee and I'm sure health and wellbeing as well particularly, uh, could we try to be courteous and understanding with both each other and officers of the council? Thank you. Third update, I'd like to remind members of the upcoming training arranged in partnership with the LGA, Local Government Association. Um, Unless it's changed, we've got uh, training on September the 16th, uh, again with the LGA, um, and there will be a councillor from another authority attending to share their experiences. Um, I was saying the other day, to be honest, the last one that I was on was absolutely fantastic, so I would uh, fully recommend it for your attendance. So that's it for my updates. Uh, moving on to agenda 
item six, uh, responses to reports of the Corporate Scrutiny Committee. Um, so, we do have some um, from my predecessor, uh, particularly around housing voids. Um, so just so, you, so, so we're aware, we do have some recommendations and of course we have cabinet committee this week which I will be uh, attending with these recommendations. So we've got to instruct officers to review the cost versus return of employing an in-house inspection team to see if we can drive down the costs of voids, to review how we recover damages costs from existing tenants and see if there is a more proactive way we can approach this long term and lastly that the portfolio holder calls Equons in to address members, major concerns around void turnover times and ask them for their action plan uh, in order to improve this. Uh, there's also something to mention, I didn't, I didn't write down in my notes here, but there's also some recommendations and I forget the cabinet meeting. Um, so I forgive, forgive me for the dates, but it, there were some further recommendations um, around uh, housing issues, housing repairs, um, and we are aware of them, and we, of course, will uh, update on the next next committee meeting, which I believe will be in August. Thank you. And moving on to agenda item seven, consideration of matters referred to corporate scrutiny committee from cabinet slash council, and there are none. So moving on to agenda item eight, uh, which is the corporate projects update. Uh, we have um, with us uh, Christy Timms, Corporate Project Officer, and this is the presentation um, to update the committee on the progress of the corporate plan and upcoming peer review. Over to Christy, if that's okay. Thank you, Thank you very much, Chair. Yep. Good evening. There are 19 slides, but I promise we're not going through them in any great detail. Um, I have provided them for the committee, and obviously they will follow on in reports in due course. I think the, the corporate uh, peer challenge one has already been uh, released, but I just wanted to reinforce to members the processes we're going to go through, the consultation we're undertaking on both of these aspects uh, of uh, challenge that we're going through and developing the new corporate plan, uh, and just give you an opportunity to feed in at this early stage. So, uh, the position is that the current plan expires on the 31st of March um, and we're looking to create a five-year corporate plan going forward that will align with the MTFS and members will be aware that that process starts in earnest in the autumn when we start looking at how much uh, funds we've got available and what we're going to do with them and prioritise. The current corporate plan, uh, we're doing a bit of a review of at the end and you'll have your performance update uh, shortly on this committee as well. Um, but it's taking forward some of those ongoing projects which are still featuring in that plan uh, into the next uh, term and also to make sure that we've got uh, a little bit of thread of continuity with some of the ongoing works. But the, the sources for development are wide and varied. Uh, they are included in that slide deck. Um, we're, we're casting the net as far, far as we can in the time scales that we've got available, using available data sets and also undertaking a, a quite thorough consultation process throughout the summer months, which is not ideal, uh, but, but certainly we will, we will give it our best endeavours and make sure that we hit uh, as many people as we can within the borough. The emerging strategic priorities from this strategic assessment that we've done to date and the resident feedback uh, basically look at five key areas. So those are council, prosperity, place, environment and well-being. Uh, and the, the key headlines are included uh, in the slide deck that you've got available. In terms of developing that narrative, we're now undertaking some what, we, what we're terming co-creation, working very closely with our partners and and key stakeholders in, in refining those messages and that word, those words that we're using and making sure that we have a, a thorough understanding of everything that we have to address throughout the process. We will then look to very quickly turn that into a draft for consultation which we will spread uh, a, a much wider net throughout the summer. 
So those that we're, we're talking very closely with in the next couple of weeks are police and fire service, the faith leaders, the county council districts uh, that we work with, the UK SPF and, uh, and local businesses, colleges, schools, residents and staff members and the voluntary sector. And already from the feedback that I've done today with about five or six sessions, we've, we've had a very positive response to those five key areas and, and some really good contributions from our, from our key stakeholders and partners. So the next stage, once we've gathered that, that final consultation, is to, uh, to work more closely with all staff. So we're doing some focused work with managers and heads of service and, and key officers over the next couple of weeks. But we're going to, to ensure that every, every member of staff has an opportunity to contribute, uh, as well as members, and that we then uh, bring forward a draft for consultation uh, that will go through Cabinet on the 18th of July, along with a fully developed consultation plan, which will take, take account of everybody that we're going to see over the next six weeks. Those responses for consultation we need to try and formulate and bring back uh, at the end of August so that by September when we start the, uh, the budget review process that we have a clear idea of where the priority areas are to start looking at the resources that we can use to back that up. The final approval stage will not be until next year, so obviously the Budget Review Group works over the winter months and in February uh, Council get to see the results of that process and the final budget that we intend to implement from the 1st of April and it's that timeline that we'll be working to to finalise the plan. So up until that point none of the corporate plan will be fixed until all of that is agreed and signed off at that full Council. So the emerging theme there is building a better Tamworth. That's the, the, the tagline we're working with at the moment, but obviously we'll be testing that throughout the next couple of weeks and refining that ready for the 18th of July. I'll pause here if there are any questions on the corporate plan development. <coughs> Councillor Wells. Um, thanks very much for that. Um, I saw your list of consultees, but I didn't hear you, might have missed it, you mentioned about how you would be or how we are going to be engaging with residents, I think are quite important. Really. Sorry. Thank you. Yes, uh, throughout the uh, the rest of the summer, so after the elections through to the middle, to towards the end of August, we'll be doing a widespread resident campaign. Um, that hasn't been fully developed yet, so I can't give members all of the details, but obviously it would welcome any contributions that members may have as to things that we can consider. We are working with voluntary sector in terms of tagging into all the existing groups to make sure that we're getting around to hard to reach areas, and we're working with the comms team in developing a broad survey that we hope all residents will take time to contribute to as they do to, to, to our normal surveys. Um, but that certainly will be a feature um, where we'll be expecting to, to, to get at least 700 general responses and then targeted responses for those demographics that we know we need to target. Councillor Jay. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> On the slide, co-creation, it's got facilitated discussion, engagement and collaboration events held with key stakeholders. Are we as councillors not key stakeholders? Thank you, Chair. Yeah, uh, um, part of this process is the scrutiny today, but also I'll be emailing out to all councillors now following this, this presentation to make sure that everybody can see what we've included in the emerging plan and get some feedback on the responses. There will be more workshops that we'll be doing later on through that extended piece, uh, but this is really about starting the ball rolling and making sure that we're getting as much input at the front as we can. All right. Um, so this is obviously, like, like you said at the start, you're going to go through this quickly tonight. So this isn't, this isn't council's input to the plan, in my view. And then it goes on here, come the date, I think it's the 8th. Uh, 8th or 9th of July is when you've got a draft one agreed. How can that be if we've not had any input, any conversation whatsoever? Who's, who's driving it to say what the plan should be, what the vision should be, what the plan is for our town? Because we're elected members, we haven't had one input to this. 
Well, it's going to be a dialogue, as I say, the, the plan isn't signed off until February next year when Cabinet and full council sign it off. So up until that point, it will be a consultation document. This first phase of co-creation is about ensuring that we've captured everything so that when we go to consultation with residents, we have a meaningful starting point. But that isn't the end of the process. There will need to be developments and changes throughout that process. By August, we should have a clearer framework, but again, it will need to go through the BRG process to ensure that it aligns with our resources, but that won't finalise until next year. Okay, I won't go on too much. For, um, my point is, on the 3rd of July, it's ELT approved the final draft and the public consultation process. So we're... In, so we're, we're going to be after... ELT and after it's gone out to public consultation, surely that's the wrong way around. The, the final draft is the draft for consultation, so it's just the starting point of that. So we, we've got to put something out to get the feedback in, but that's the point at which that 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 <coughs> development of what we're doing now is presented to the internal leadership team, so that we can then build the consultation plan, which will have to start after cabinet so it won't be able to go public until after cabinet but we need to have that draft ready to go through the decision making process to approve it to start the process of consultation councillor cashman chair yeah. um i'll go back to consultation engagement and the um starting off from what we want our priorities oh hang on i've got one page now oh wait until long. Right, the emerging strategic priorities. Now, how are we going to drill down so that we actually know what we can offer and what's pie in the sky? Um, because, I mean, the words are lovely, and, and I know they always start off lovely, but we need to know what we're talking about. We need to know what does a caring, cooperative, innovative and data-driven council look like so that people in the street know what we're talking about because for a lot of people this is nothing you know we know what it means but for a lot of people so when we consult with stakeholders can we make sure that the language we use is everyday english and that it's understandable by the vast majority of people especially residents thank you If I can just respond to that, yeah, we will be we will be making sure that we play an English chess to all of all of the consultation documents that go out into the general general public. With stakeholders, um, we are talking about sort of specific project projects that sit underneath those key objectives as well, um, even at this early stage. So there will be a, a list of objectives, and that will feed into the budget review group process uh, and the development of the MTFS to see, as you say, what's feasible to deliver. Councillor Jay. Yep, totally unrelated to the previous point. Um, it's got on here one of the slides. Council's vision needs to be created in line with the MTFS. Um, I feel like the, the vision should be agnostic of finances first, rather than linking it to the MTFS. What does the, what do we want Tamworth to be? What do we want the council to be? It should be agnostic of finances, and then you go into the process and work out what can and can't be, be done. That's just a comment, I think, as a vision, you should be agnostic of finances first. That's probably one for, you know, Carol and the, the new administration takeaway, but be agnostic first, be adventurous, work out what the vision is you want it to be, and then pull back from there based on finances. Anybody else want to question or comment? Oh, oh. Yeah. Um... I may have heard this wrong because obviously the, the sound isn't brilliant. Um, is is Councillor Jay suggesting that we make the decisions and not the residents and the stakeholders? Because I think they are the ones, if it's going to be successful, and our corporate plan will be successful, it's got to be driven by them and what they require and not by 30 people in this council chamber. Well, I don't want to put words into Councillor Jay's uh... Uh, mind, but uh, I'll just hand over to you if that's okay. Yeah, it must have been the hearing from the sound. Yeah, I didn't say the word decide. It was just in our input, basically. 
Last call for any questions or comments in relation to this. We happen to move on. I had got some questions, but I think they probably fall sort of more into into agenda item ten. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll get to that, I suppose. So moving on to agenda item nine, uh, which is the, as we all know, the quarterly performance report. <coughs> and we have the leader of the council. Oh right, okay. Thank you, Chair. So. This is Sorry, Councillor Dean. I've just no, no. It's actually my fault. I've, I've just been made aware that, that actually there's a, an additional. Yeah. No, I know. Apologies. I thought you. I thought you were done. I'll. Have... Sorry, I'd fooled you all by by pausing for questions on the corporate plan. It is really confusing because they've both got corporate in the title and they've both got lots of P. So corporate plan and then corporate peer challenge. So the CPC. Uh, which is proposed uh, to be scheduled for the 29th to the 31st of October. Uh, members may be aware this is a voluntary process. Um, it's peers supporting other councils to uh, find their, re refine their processes, uh, ensure that they have good governance in place as part of uh, the assurance framework that operates voluntarily for local government. Um, there are five core elements, things that they look for in terms of the priorities and outcomes that we've set, which is why the corporate plan is so critical uh, in having uh, that developing and, and working alongside um, how we're leading the organisation and providing place leadership to the borough, uh, the governance and culture that operates within the council, as well as the financial planning and management of the budget. Um, it also gives us a, a summary recommendation on our capacity for improvement, so uh, how confident they are in us to continue to develop those, those skills and support the borough and the residents. Um, in addition, for this uh, corporate peer challenge, we've also asked uh, the LGA uh, to look at uh, how... The, the, the council uses technology, uh, particularly emerging technologies such as AI uh, and those sorts of things uh, that everybody's talking about and, and how we can harness them to improve efficiency uh, and, and the outcomes for our residents. So there's a lot of information that goes into uh, supporting a corporate peer challenge. Not un un understandably, they need to grasp um, where we are as a council and, and how we're progressing and what our plans are for the future. So we'll be compiling all of those elements over the next couple of months, uh, including uh, updating all the strategies and plans uh, that, that are relevant uh, and making sure they have sight of them, as well as the data uh, that you'll be presented with tonight and other performance data that's available through LG Inform and the LG LGA platforms. Um, the CPC itself, this, the three days that they're here are very intensive. The two weeks leading up to it, there will be impacts by the CPC team. They will be attending committee meetings and uh, obviously we will be compiling all of the information between now and the end of August to, to feed into them. So there, there is an impact on the organisation, but hopefully the benefits that we will get from that process in understanding where we are and how we how we need to improve and, and what our um, what our chief challenges are um, in relation to the LGA best practice, uh, then it will be a, a tremendous help. There is a, a pre-visit timeline that's in your pack, uh, just explaining how and when things are going to happen, um, as well as a post-visit timeline, because after we've had the visits in October, they will be providing a draft report, hopefully by the end of November, um, which will then lead to a series of actions that the council will need to respond to in developing a clear action plan for any recommendations to be delivered within the 12 months following the review. Are there any questions on that element of my presentation? Uh, before I move on to Councillor Jay, I just want to say um, this hasn't been sent out digitally at all yet, has it? Is that possible that that could be done afterwards to all members of the committee? It would be helpful. So, so we can reference back. Councillor Jay? Just a comment rather than a question. Just uh, obviously, this was due to happen and then the pandemic happened and then got delayed and other things took priority. So, it's great to see it happening. Um, it's great that Stephen had this a priority when he joined and we can see it already moving and, and happening. So I think it's a really positive. So although it's not obligatory, it is an important thing to do. So well done. Thank you. Any more questions or comments regarding the peer review? We're all good. And there's nothing else now, is there, after the peer review? That's the two. Okay. For that particular agenda item. 
Okay, cool. Moving on then, um, back to you, Councillor Carol Ding, Leader of the Council. Thank you, Chair. Uh, so you have before you the quarter four 23-24 performance report, and this report provides the committee with an overview of the council performance for the fourth quarter of 23-24. It reports the council's position in relation to relation to progress with strategic corporate plan projects and updates on the financial position, the corporate risks, audits, information governance and complaints, and the Cabinet will look at this on the 18th of July this year. Um, I, just one point I would make, this is quite a lengthy document and um, Becky and I have spoken about this and she is looking at a way that we can refine this so that it's a bit more easily digestible for councillors to look at. There, there, there is, I'm, I'm sure everybody has read it page by page, but there is an awful lot of information in here. So any comments on the way it is structured and what you would like to see would be really useful. Thank you. Did anybody want, uh, any officers want to add to that at all, or are we all good? It's a fairly standard, you know, quarterly report, basically, that comes back to the committee. Um, I was just going to say, well, thank you for, for actually the report. Um, obviously, it's very, um, it's very intense, should we say. Certainly, for, I'm sure for any new members that haven't seen it before. So, um, it's lots of interesting data if you're a data person. I've got one question. Uh, for the section 151 officer. Uh, page 41 of the report um, talks about the outturn variance, which now stands at 2.274 million. Is there anything else in the report? Is that a concern? And is there anything else in the report that is a concern? Page 41. Thank you. So if you look on page 41, the variance is £3.3 .3 million, which is an increase um, from the £2.274 million that was reported previously. Um, the difference relates to a bad debt adjustment where we managed to collect a significant amount more that, than we anticipated. So about 750,000 of that relates to that bad debt. That's, that's why it's increased. Um, sorry, sorry just to... is, is it a concern and is there anything else in the report that you'd like to highlight that is of a concern? We're not unduly concerned about it because we were anticipating the underspend and that's largely down to the interest rates and that, that high level of reserves that we've got. So the amount of interest that we received has been, been a lot higher than what we anticipated when we set the budget where interest rates were significantly lower. So um, the majority of that underspend relates to Treasury management income that we weren't expecting. Um, we are now in the process of finalising the accounts and we are now going to start the budgets and we will be working through underspends with budget managers to look at consistent underspends with a view which we look, sort of links into the next report that we've got coming to us to um, identify any savings that, that, may be, um, that we may be able to make as a result of consistent underspends. Do members have any, any questions? Councillor Jay. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> firstly, I mean, the, the highlights are really good. There's two pages of highlights of things delivered in the last quarter, um, which is really good. And, you know, the fact that there aren't that many, there's not always going to be that many questions on the main report shows the council was in a good position. So, you know, we've, we've handed the baton over in a, a good place. I've got a couple of comments. I'll go the first one and then see if anyone else has got any. On um, it's page 70 on mine, so for corporate risk 4.1, corporate risks detailed summary. Number one, the parent risk title is finance, finance slash financial stability 2023-2024. And it's got current risk status as red. Now, I think that's incorrect because 2023-2024 was balanced. <coughs> So how can it be read if that's the title? So either the title's wrong or the rating's wrong. 
Um, and then the second point, but linked to that, is let's assume it's financial stability into the future and not got no data assigned to it. Is red necessarily the right rating given that there's three years balanced and then we know that certain things drop out of the budget that actually do get added back in by government later on? So there's two, two points to that. So the red status on, on this risk relates to the long-term viability, uh, long-term financial sustainability of the council. Um, and as you'll, you'll be aware from the budget that we set, um, the deficit in future years is, is increasing quite significantly. And that's what that red, that red status relates to. Councillor Jay. Thanks. Yeah, so in that case, then I think um, just, we should just change the risk title because long-term financial stability is something, because that makes out that basically now there's an issue and there isn't. Okay, but I think the risk relates to the 23-24 budget setting, so I, I take away what you're saying and we'll, we'll look at reviewing that for the next meeting. Councillor Wells. Um, yeah, I am new to this committee, so I'm going to ask some stupid questions. I do apologise, perhaps, and hopefully you'll bear with me a little bit. I did read this document. It did take me a little while to get through it, and I'm not sure I've understood all of it, but what seems to have stuck out... On Sorry, do you mind just bringing the microphone slightly close? It's turned off. You missed, you missed that great thing, but you, know, you didn't miss a lot. Um, I, read, I did read the document, and what seemed to drop out of a number of tables, um, which was highlighted both as, as risks and, and um, et cetera, is the future high street fund. There's a there's sort of little red and orange blobs against them. And when I, I look at page 16, um, table 2.1, um, I'm just a bit ignorant. I'd, I'd welcome a little bit of... Um, um, help here is, is that the work is progressing positively and multiple projects are moving forward simultaneously so we've got a program of works going on I'm aware of the things that, that are being built but I, I, I think I'm just would like to understand a little bit further about or your view really on, on the risks and whether we've covered those off in the current financial provision adequately and if indeed moving forward um, we feel the risk profile is reducing or, or we still, we're still carrying some risks going forward. I know that's quite a lot to, to deal with, but I, uh, that's the sort of thing that, that, that worries me. Because you have said there that the challenges persist. These are known to the project team. Well, I, I just welcome a little bit more colour if that's OK. Thank, thank you very much. Yeah, I think... I mean, I think in terms of the Future High Street Fund um, programme, obviously it's a very com complex programme. Um, there are a number of risks which have been mitigated as far as they can, but I think one of the sort of what's reflected in the performance report is that, you know, it's not possible to entirely mitigate all risks associated with the, uh, with the programme. I mean, one of our principal mi risk mitigations is that we do have a project board which meets on a monthly basis. Um, and so the prog programme and projects are kept under regular review um, so that there is sort of ongoing assessment of those risk factors um, and, the, you know, the programme is under control in that sense. Um, I think in terms of the sort of the three areas of risk that we would probably sort of want to highlight and want to say is sort of continue to be underlying risks is obviously the need to make spend and commit resources um, from government. So those resources must be um, defrayed by the end of this financial year. So obviously that does put considerable pressure on such a complex um, programme uh, with, with multiple projects, lots of moving parts, lots of other partners involved. Um, so that, that remains a risk that we keep under constant, uh, constant review. Um, there's then two other sort of areas, I suppose, which we, we would probably want to sort of highlight. The other is around um, some of the issues that we have had um, in relation to uh, middle entry. Um, so that has been a, an area of risk for us because we are uh, working with closely with the partner peer group. Um, we, we are, of course, working very closely with them. But again, that, you know, there are areas around that particular project which um, are not entirely under our control. So that remains as an area of risk that we, we continue to highlight as, as being something that we need to keep a close eye on. 
Um, I think the other sort of area is around programming of works. Um, so, you know, that again, making sure that all of these works happen uh, in, in the right sequence at the right time, uh, you know, those are also areas of risk that we, we kind of, you know, we have to keep uh, con continual um, vigilance on. So I think in terms of um, highlighting the programme as having a number of risks, I think that's a sensible, you know, approach that we take. We do have risk mitigation measures. As I say, there is a, a programme board that meets on a monthly basis. Uh, that that um, programme board, um, on a monthly basis, reviews all risks, um, all programme delivery, and we do seek to overcome any sort of uh, any humps in the road uh, as, as we come to them. But it is about having that prudent approach, continuing to register that this is a continues to be a very complex, risky, uh, and difficult undertaking. But I think it, I would say that the risks are all managed uh, and will continue to be managed. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Jay. Yeah, uh, I think Rob's right. I mean, if, if we were tracking it with green, then that would be a concern. With a project of that size, at this stage, with so many moving parts, um, it's bound to be f you know, filled with ambers and reds and a couple of greens. Um, I did have a question. So in, depends which way you're looking at it, so 89 of the report, PDF, or 101 of the whole pack, so it's where you're talking about future high street fund. You've got the individual lines for notes, and then there's a due date on the right. So obviously they're all in the past because they're done. What's the rationale for not just putting complete? Because you know it talks about, for example, full council decision required on capital, need government approval on spend, when spend date, etc. That's all done, obviously. Is there any rationale for not just putting complete in that column? Who wants to answer? Have you got the page number? So of the PDF itself, it's pay where there's 100 pages, is 89. But then printed on the document on the left, it's got 101. <laughs> My point here is that any, if someone were to pick this up, it might look like, you know, we left lots of things unanswered, but we didn't. Apologies for the delay in a response there, Chair. Um, I think that that's a, a fair point. Sorry, it took us a while to find the, the relevant page. Um, I think that's something we'll take away and look at as a potential improvement to the presentation of the report. And I think perhaps that's one of the areas that, that um, Councillor De Dean perhaps was referring to in terms of simplifying and making this report more transparent. Uh, so we, if we can take that away, we'll have a look at that as, as, uh, as an opportunity for improvement um, for the next iteration of the report. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see if anyone else has got anything, but I've got, if not, I've got one more totally. Anybody else? Okay. Oh, Councillor Coates. Uh, thank you. Um, since uh, it's the page 62 on the left, or I believe it's, let me get the 60, yeah, 62 or 50 across the top, whichever way you look at it. Um, public open spaces, section 106. Uh, it says 27,000. I'm guessing that's saying it's due to staff short. Is it unlikely to be spent in the financial year? Um, would it be possible to divide that between the councillors? Because we know what our wards are like. And it's 900 quid extra going to our allowances. I'm just seeing that you haven't spent it. I don't know if that's going to roll over into next year's allowance. But I'm just thinking give it to the councillors because we can look at the projects in our wards. Just a comment and a question, please. Yeah, just to re-emphasise, that is uh, money that we obviously can spend on our own wards, not not part of the uh, the council allowances. Just to just to confirm that, uh, anybody want to answer that? Um, well, first of all, to say um, obviously, you know that that is there is a result of um, some staffing shortages which we are addressing um, in the current financial year. Um, I'd also sort of say, the, I suppose the other important thing to note around those Section 106 monies is they do come with conditions. Um, so they are generally for specific purposes, often geographically 
um, dedicated. So um, it, it's, uh, it, it, there are probably limitations on what we can actually spend them on. But um, certainly be, uh, we, we can come back to you perhaps to look with a bit more of an explanation about what those monies entail, what the limitations are in terms of how they can be spent and what the plans are to, to make sure that they are spent um, in the coming financial year. Cheers, thank you. Uh, I think, sorry, Chair, just, just to add to that, I think we've actually got the officer in Pulse now um, who will be able to move some of those things forward. So just that we have got the resource in the organisation. Uh, Councillor Jay, have we, did you want to come back or? Sorry. I said I got one point, I got, I got three, but I'll do the first one first. Um, page 16 on the left or page four of the PDF, um, where's the strategic project summary of the table. Gungay is green and due 31st of March, 2025. Is that realistic? Because we, I mean, that's largely on hold and working out what the plan on hold and working out what the plan is going to be, right? Just confirm the page number again. It's four, yeah, it's four of the, the PDF or page 16 on the left. So there's a third one down, Gungate Project in the summary. Staying there green on 31st of March. Um, Chair, I, I would... Um, I think that that actually, uh, I'll have to check on that in terms of your comment about uh, is that realistic. I think what is realistic is the action is the land assembly. So what would be achieved by that point would be the land assembly as opposed to completion of the overall sort of programme and project. But I can go away and get a, a more up-to-date and comprehensive update on the progress on that project and delivery of that project. Thank you, Chair. I'll just throw in a question. Uh, before we go back, uh, on many of the pages where you've got managed by, is that up to date in terms of who is managing? Chair, I believe. Um, we've certainly gone through this at our man corporate management team. Um, is there a particular issue or a particular item that you'd want to run? I didn't want to single anybody out. I just wanted to make sure that uh, the, <laughs> the column is up to date. That's all. Thank you. Councillor Jay. Uh, yeah, the same table, um, but the second page of that table, so page five of the PDF, page 17 on the left. Strategic review of leaseholder service charges, project status green, due date 31st of March 2025. Does that align to what we promised residents at this full council? because it seems a long time from that full council decision. And um, I believe it was within 12 months, which is way before 31st of March 2025. Chair, if I may, um, I believe um, that the, um, the end date for the approval of the outcome of that review was August of um, 2025. The um, March 2025 refers to full implementation of any recommendations. Um, and that project now, we have had the draft report from our consultants that is um, going to be subject to um, review by the, uh, by, by the, um, uh, what it's the, 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 what you refer to it, but um, the, the um, group that includes uh, members and leaseholders. Um, and then we'll be moving forward to bringing those recommendations back to cabinet. So I think in terms of the, the approval of the recommendations from memory was August um, 2025. Um, that, um, sorry, my apologies, 20, August 2024. Um, August, uh, March 2025 refers to the full implementation of all those recommendations. So just to be really clear then, so residents won't have to wait till March 2025 to know the outcome, it's just the delivery of that outcome will then take a bit longer. Yeah, so the, the overall project plan has been updated to recognise that some of the recommendations will take um, uh, some time to actually implement, but we are still on track to have those recommendations in place and approved by Cabinet um, within the original timescales that we set out. Thank you. Any more que questions or comments in relation to this? Yeah, Councillor Wells. Sorry, it might sound like another naive question, but I'll keep going. Um, where a budget hasn't been spent, I'm, I'm looking 
particularly for example at local nature reserves there in I'm guessing that that's not going the benefit doesn't go into next year financial year that's that's going to be uh, another decision isn't it so I guess what I'm saying is that the anticipated spend there on the local nature reserve has, has now been lost is that is that is that an eventuality or how does it work could you just confirm what page you're on for me please Page 62, it, it was in connection with um, Gav's point on the, 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 the Section 106. There's, there's, a, there's a number of budgets there that, um, for reasons of staffing, I think has been a trend there. We haven't managed to spend them for, for whatever reason. Um, it was just... Oh. Yeah. <laughs> the community... <laughs> Stumped again. <laughs> okay. So the section one, well, section 106 money set aside, so it, it doesn't mean it would be lost, it just, just means deferred into the next financial year. So, um, so it certainly will be still spent on those projects because that's what it's been set aside for. Um, in the normal budget of the authority, if we have an underspend, then uh, budget managers have uh, an opportunity to request it to be carried forward if there's a legitimate reason for it not being spent, um, if something maybe has just been delivered at the beginning of April, for example, rather than the end of March, and it's a bit of a project related or delivery issue, um, then they can request for it to be carried forward in reserves, um, and then that will be available for spend in the, in the next year. Okay. Councillor Couchman, did you want to? I was just going back to um, what Councillor Jay said, and I think he covered most of it. But we are keeping all our leaseholders up to date and up to speed with everything. We're not sort of like all of a sudden going to give them a letter that says you need to pay this or whatever. It is. It, I know there's. A, I know there's a leaseholders and uh, working group going on, but I just wanted to know: Are we keeping everybody? up to date so all the interested parties know now where they stand sorry can i just say can i just say something just i just want some clarification considering we do have potentially a member within the committee that might be closely related to this? Is this something that we can actually talk about or get more detail on? Um, I, I just want to just clarify that as well. I, I mean, my view, and I'll take um, the views of others in the room, but I think as, as there are no decisions being made tonight, then I would suggest that actually there's no need to for a, a, an interest to be declared. Um, if the committee moves to a point where you, you wish to make decisions, um, either by way of recommendations to cabinet or any other measures, then I think we would probably be asking for a, 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 an interest to be declared at that point. But I think this is this is just information giving. So I, personally, I'll be comfortable if others. Yeah. Yeah. I'm The stage where we are is that we have a draft report from our consultants. Um, that will be taken through the consultative group, which has leaseholder representatives. Um, from there, we will then be communicating the outcome um, by what, for consultation with all leaseholders. Um, so at the moment, they, uh, there hasn't been an update sent to all leaseholders because that work has been undertaken. Um, if you like, we've been working with the consultants to get to the point where we have that draft report. Obviously, the leaseholders affected um, in relation to the roofs have been um, contacted by the consultants um, and also are aware because of the surveys that have been undertaken and have been aware of the process and the timescales in relation to that. So our next stage will be, once we have those draft recommendations and outcomes, will be to communicate with all leaseholders. Um, so that will be by way of a consultation with them uh, as opposed to, as you describe it, you know, uh, a fait accompli and an outcome. Thank you, Chair. Any more questions or comments on the performance report? Councillor Dean. Thank you, Chair. I, I just wanted to come back about the future high street funds. It's been something that a lot of members have been concerned about 
and how much information they know about it. So officers have put on a seminar which will be going ahead on the 8th of July and I hope everybody's got it in their diary because we want to make sure that everybody's fully informed about where we are, what the plans are, so that when they get questions they're able to field them. Great stuff. Anybody else? Uh, we have a recommendation, uh, which is that we endorse the contents. Oh, sorry. You need to put your hand up more. You did, you did nod to me before, Councillor Dean, so I thought you'd noted it. Um, so, some good news for you all and some bad news. Good news is, this is my last point, bad news, I'm on this committee all year. So, um, on that same table of project summary, it's got sustainability strategy to res resolve long-term MTFS position. Um, it's got 31st of March 2025, which is after the budget setting process. Is that right? Should it not be earlier to then support the budget setting process? I would, so you have the report tonight coming to scrutiny tonight and to Cabinet on Thursday for the sustainability plan, um, which is now going to be called the financial stability plan. Um, I think that date refers to the delivery of, of the achievement of some of the first step of those goals when we set the budget in February. So it's sort of it's the first stage of that process um, to, to be able to identify the savings that we need to make for the future. So it's, it's at the termination of the budget process, really. OK. Um, so is the budget in March and not February? I thought it was February. I'm asking because loads of them just say 31st of March, but if the budget's earlier, should sorry, sorry, should the strategy not be completed earlier? So the budget clearly is set at the end of February, um, but there is scope for the final date for setting council taxes, the 11th of March. So. Um, We've just put the 31st of March just by the end of the financial year for completeness, but hopefully it should be finalised in February. Are you happy with that answer? I'm always happy, yeah. Fantastic. Any more comments, questions in relation to the report? No? Okay, so we have recommendations, which of course is to endorse the content of this report and for it to be considered then for cabinets. Um, would anybody like to move this along? Councillor Jay and second, Councillor Summers. All those in favour, please raise your hands. And that is everyone. Thank you. So moving on to the uh, next uh, agenda item, which is agenda item 10 sustainability strategy and productivity plan um who's starting this one off councillor dean thank you chair so we have our financial stability plan and productivity plan and the purpose of this report is to provide um, corporate scrutiny with the information and a timetable for the financial stability plan and productivity plan prior to it going for consideration to Cabinet on Thursday, the 27th of June. In your pack, you will notice that there is a letter that we have received from the Minister for Local Government, and that send, sets out the criteria for the productivity plan that has been put together. Um, I'd like to thank officers for the work that's gone into this. It's something that we've got to do and get done at um, quite short notice. This will then be put on our website and it will be a document that we will have there for everyone to see. So, um, yes, I would like to your endorsement on those five items, please. Did any officers want to come in on that or we should go straight to questions? Okie dokie. Well, I do have some questions. First one is, is the financial stability plan in the report? And if so, where is it? So this, this report outlines the measures in the financial stability plan. So 
so effectively they're the measures that we're going to take so it, it's it's the, the process that we're going to embark on to identify required savings in the future so yes this report is is a it's a plan yeah, I just wanted to clarify that because, of course, you have got a heading of financial stability plan on the second page of the report, um, which I guess moves into the next page and the next page after that. So just wanted to be clear about that because obviously it's not an appendix um, item on the, on the agenda. So just wanted to clarify that. Moving on, two mini assurance questions, I suppose. Uh, page one slash three. Three is what is actually on the bottom of the page. Um, so recommendation uh, five, just to confirm, uh, we have finalization and sign off of the productivity plan to the leader. Just to confirm, who is the leader? It's Councillor Dean. Sounds petty, but of course we have got other leaders um, within the council. So just wanted to clarify that. I think uh, precision matters, should we say. Um, page two and four, um, and four and six, mentions the abbreviation RSG, uh, which I'm assuming is Revenue uh, Support Grant. Um, it's an abbreviation. It's not actually spelled out anywhere in the report as that being so. So I would... Um, I would well. Do you want to just confirm that that is the case? I do apologise. I'm normally very careful to explain abbreviations, and I've missed that one. So my apologies. Yes, it is <coughs> revenue support grant. Yeah, I'm a bit of a, an abbreviation um, sort of watcher in a sense, and I think it's important, particularly for newer members as well, that might not be uh, well aware of. Chair, wouldn't it be a good idea if we all had a crib sheet with all the different abbreviations about everything so that we could go and look and say, oh, yeah, that one's that, that's that. Because I've forgotten over the years which is which. New people come in on straight away. They're not sure. So it might just be an idea if we could have a crib sheet with all our abbreviations on. Yeah, I'll let the, entertain, um, the uh, officers... Uh, decide if that's if that if they want to do that all i'd say is i mean essentially it comes down to each individual report of course as long as it's spelt out um, at the beginning of the report and then further abbreviation can happen as a continuation within the report itself that's generally how how it works um moving on to the next one page two slash four referring to the five-year budget forecast what is the main driver of the deficit more than quadrupling from year 26, 27. So the main driver for the deficit is, is um, the business rates reset. So we will lose, uh, we're um, expecting to lose all the growth that the council receives on business rate income when they reset business rates uh, nationally so at the moment um, the, the, the business rates are valued back in 2013 um, and any growth since then the council takes a large proportion of um, and once they reset nationally we are likely to, to lose some of, of that business rates reset there's also new homes bonus that will be dropping out uh, we've anticipated will drop out from 26 27 which is about half a million pounds. So it's generally government grant that we're, we're uncertain of in the future, whether it will be replaced or not, or whether there will be any floors or ceilings to help protect us from any large um, cuts in government funding. Thank you. Uh, page three slash five, under spend to save, and regarding the transformation reserve, it states this will be predominantly ICT, um, by the way, information communication technology, um, it does say it in the report, thankfully, uh, based what does this mean exactly? It's not quite clear. So what does that statement mean? Um, it's going to be predominantly ICT in terms of the transformation reserve. So I suppose it's more of an assumption that ICT will be the mechanism that we use to deliver 
um, improved ways of service that might be able to free us up more time to deliver um, a, 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 um, redirect staff time so it's um, knowing that the ICT is the area where we think we can make most savings. It's what we anticipate rather than a projection. We don't. We, we need to look into that further to come up with a, a firm plan yet. Um, back to the peer review, I suppose. Um, I've got a question, um, and I'll let anybody else come in after that as well. Um, just to confirm, how was it initiated and how long is it expected to take? Forgive me if it was already mentioned. So I'll take the response on the peer review. Um, it, it, the, um, they'll actually be on site for three days, so I think it's 28th, 29th and 30th um, of October. And as Councillor Jay says, it was, it was initiated by me really in conversations I'd had with the LGA. The fact that we haven't had uh, an, a corporate assessment since 2012 or 2013 and we're supposed to have them within five years so that was the rationale behind me uh, wanting to have a peer review and absolutely agree i think it's um you know long time coming isn't it and uh, i think it will um it does certainly make improvements as well does anybody else want to come in with any questions at this particular stage councillor jay thanks um so Stephen and Becky might not like what I'm going to say, but I want to talk to Councillor Dean as the leader. Just uh, I implore you to not just strip things out based on trying to hit savings targets based on the government taking money away that actually never actually generally happens. So we're always in this position. It's always in three, four years' time. The money's going to drop off, and of course it doesn't drop off. They just don't look that far ahead. So we put, you know, in the last budget, there were lots of fantastic growth items for the town. Um, there's new staff in the street scene team, there's new customer service staff, there's a new Christmas um, festival, there's new, you know, there's lots and lots of things we put in there that are great for our town and the future, more money for the future hardship fund, etc. I just implore you not to be led down that path of just stripping all this stuff out based on something that probably will never happen. Have a, you know, be bold with it. Did anybody want to come on, uh, come back to that or shall we move on? You okay? Oh. Just take that point on board and we will look at everything. Not not do things quickly. We will, you know, take our time and make sure that every decision is well thought out and we take advice from our officers. Um if I could just refer you back to table one, we're in a deficit position in this year of uh, one point one million pounds rising to 3.2 in 2025-26 um, and that's without taking some of the funding out so even at a, a current year level we're in a deficit position of 1.1 million pounds um, the, the reserves that we have are not sustainable in the long term with that deficit so we do need to make some savings the amount of exactly how much will be determined in future years I, I accept that and and we do build those into our projections you'll see that the amounts that, um, that we're looking at here don't cover the full deficit for that very reason because um, they're targets and also we know that in the future when we get a funding announcement we are the, the, it's a moving target of the deficit figure so i'm mindful of that and um you know it's a uh, but we do know that we do need to make some savings. We're not in a sustainable position, even as we speak in this current year. So, uh, thanks for that. Just come back on that. So, I just what I'm getting at is, you know, things like um, underspends, for example, right? They're an easy thing to to remove. However, uh, f you know, not just in the council, but in business, whatever. When you've got someone who owns their budget for their department, they'll they'll push back. I'm taking away underspends because they want they want the fat in there for anything they need. So then the obvious place then is to look at big ticket items that are being delivered outside of that. And you might be pushed down that route to get rid of them, but you know look look for the stuff that makes sense first of all. Getting that don't be pushed down, being challenged on well my underspend I might need it, or my whatever I might need it was never been used before just as a safety net when things are being ruined in our our town. So just be careful of that. Before I move on to the productivity plan, I suppose, has anybody got any more questions at this stage? No. Um, so 
just wanted to highlight something. Page four six, four slash six. Sorry. Um, so this this part here, the under productivity plan, the first part references a letter received from the government, uh, albeit without any guidance over the. This is a quote, albeit without any guidance over what the plan should look like, or how it should be structured. Um, <coughs> was mentioned in the report um, and I don't want to sort of have a dig really but um, it's sort of quite um, I suppose what you could say is taking aim a little bit potentially I'm happy to be you know uh, shown wrong on this um, but maybe you know maybe it's just my interpretation um, at the letter from the minister um, so I just say um, further to this um, I would say the letter actually from the government says I'm not looking to impose excessive burdens and I'm not issuing you with a formal template or detailed list of criteria to meet. So it sort of answers that question. So I don't think the exp expectation I suppose should have been really that there was going to be anything more substantial. I actually think that this is a good thing and actually minimises um, you know, sort of further bureaucracy in TBC and uh, you know, liberalises constraints on interpretation, should we say. Um, so that's not really a question, but I thought I'd just mention it, and if you wanted, of course, the right to reply on that one, you can do so, but uh, just thought I'd mention it. No? Okay. Um, what impact is there, because we've mentioned, I think what has been mentioned previously is the interesting interest sorry, on the savings, given the situation we're in. Um, could this possibly tilt the impact on our medium term financial strategy? Does that have much bearing, potentially? I'm not sure I quite understand the question, but the interest that we receive on the savings, um, we have obviously budgeted for a higher rate of interest this financial year. Um, it is difficult to predict in the future, as you'll accept in recent, in recent months and recent years. It's um, moved around unexpectedly, um, not in line with what the markets would have expected. So that makes it difficult to determine. Um, so it, it is an area where if, if the rates vary from what we have in the budget, you will always see quite a large budget variance. Um, I would also say that some of the reserves relate to things like the future high street grant um, and as we spend those the level of money that we have available to invest will decrease because we're spending it on the projects for which it's been awarded. So, uh, so as those go down it, the amount that we have invested decreases so it has a lesser impact on the budget and we try and predict both of those when we set the budget um, in February. Thank you. Just one more question for now. Um, would you say we're utilising all possible or available grants? Is there a necessity for this be, to be reviewed at any point? Uh, we do take opportunity of all grants when they become available. Um, sometimes when the government announces grants, it's a requirement to bid for, bid for the grant. And in that case, you might need to have a project already prepared and that can make it quite difficult. Um, but we do look for opportunities and we do liaise with other, other councils and organisations and try and make sure we maximise on those grants wherever we can. Anybody got any questions or comments at this stage? No? Okay, just um, I'll move on to the actual Appendix 2 part um, of the Productivity Plan. Um, two quick questions, and this is on the content and the structure more so, I suppose. Um, on the first page, it notes the four main areas the government has listed in the letter. Um, however, I would suggest you simply copy the key, er key he area headers as set out in the government letter, uh, and which uh, you have used further in the further down in the productivity plan. So I'm just talking about the first page of that productivity plan. Um, I think basically tried to you know shorten and simplify it. Um, 
So I just think it would prevent uh, confusion and enable consistency with the rest of the plan. Um, just an observation there. And second observation uh, embedded in the table, it's clear that the responses are much fuller in content in the content than the questions to consider um, part of the table. As such, I would suggest moving away from the table layout and simply list the considerations along with the area header at the top of the page, followed by the evidence response filling the rest of the page. It would just have a, a bit more of a clearer view, should we say. Um, not really a question, but that's just some observations. Yeah. Oops. Yeah, I can certainly take those comments on board. Um, we will also be um, presenting presenting the, the plan in a, in a um, more visual format when it's complete as well for, for release onto the web publication, onto the website and when we send it in. So um, this is more an approval of the, the words and where we're going in the direction of the, of the plan. Thank you. Area section one, should we say, I suppose, of the productivity plan in the appendix. Um, I do think there's a lack of evidence here um, shown um, to a couple of the, I suppose, um, considerations, uh, which were how have, you transform, how have you transformed the way you design and how do you measure productivity in your organization i don't think that's been demonstrated on both of those um, and also what are your current plans for transformation over the next two years and how will you measure the effect of these changes again i don't think there's much evidence that's currently shown in the productivity plan at the moment so moving on uh, area slash section two regards taking advantage advantage of technology um gonna be quite brutal about this one uh, <laughs> if anybody can convince me otherwise i'm not particularly seeing the mass benefits that it has to offer being utilized effectively in tbc at the moment i think there's a lot to be done and, and obviously that was discussed a little bit earlier in the in the meeting um so bearing in mind the ICT strategy started in 2020, um, I've gone over that strategy, uh, which was 2020 to 2025, and we've already talked about um, how that has to be renewed. Um, there's a couple of entries on, on, the, uh, on the strategy around data, which also reflects in the uh, productivity plan. I just thought I'd mention them. So ICT will support and champion the use of data to drive decision making through better use of knowledge, information and insight. That's page 191 if anyone's interested. And page 195 of the strategy, we must use data to empower and enable our customer service team to direct resources more effectively. So I do think again, um, there's not really much evidence of that um, happening in my particular opinion. And of course, we've got AI and all the rest of it happening at the moment. So it'd be good to see that uh, talked about more in detail. So I suppose my question on that is, do you accept that we need to do more as a council to drive and inf implement technological change? Thank you. Um, yes, I do recognise that we do need to do some more and the strategy is currently um, undergoing the refresh. Um, so we are looking at um, different ways and all of the things that you've mentioned are um, being considered in that to improve that data that we have and the insight and actually being able to make the decisions from there. Thank you. Warm Area three, uh, sorry, council. So it was just a very brief comment. Um, thank you for your comments, uh, Councillor Smith. Um, but in, in various interactions with, with my residents in, in, in Amington, it's exactly the same feedback I've received from my residents. You know, they have said consistently they're expecting, they've used a phrase to me, a data-driven response. That's what's been given to me. 
So I, I would assure the council, I think it's quite important. I, I think, I think, I don't think people are necessarily expecting Amazon here, but I, I, I think they are wanting to see the response there. They want to see how we're going to be using data to deliver their services. And I think if I might give the feedback, they, they want to see some transparency around that as well. Um, I'd be happy to discuss in more detail, but I just want to um, give that feedback from the people we actually pay our taxes. Thank you. Yeah, a bit of a side note, really, in terms of, you know, and I don't want to go too down on this, but, you know, ICT, there's there's a, not a lot that's actually been brought to, to committee, really, in, in reality. Uh, I think the last update um, around the area was 2000, was last year, actually. Um, and before that, uh, there was, uh, when the when the strategy was implemented, uh, there was some some noise in the first year and uh, the year later as well. Um, but other than that, there's not really been much. So, it's an area that definitely I would certainly make a bin, a, a bigger impact on in terms of the productivity plan and of course the uh, the future strategy ICT strategy, uh, along with the corporate plan as well, of course. Uh, area section three, nothing particularly stands out. Uh, section four, moving on to the next one. Um, yeah, something to note is I'm assuming this is not completed as missing the questions to consider section as listed in other areas. Um, I did refer back to the minister's letter and there were some questions to consider on the original letter, which of course weren't then pasted onto the, onto the uh, productivity uh, plan. So you might want to look at that um, in the TBC response on that section, section four, um, I do note the content is very much external focused. Um, so I'd, I'd suggest adding some barriers that actually exist, not just external, but sort of within TBC um, or from TBC as the question doesn't necessarily dismiss this, I would suggest. Uh, if you've got any that come to mind in terms of barriers um, that are much more of an internal nature, then you might want to speak up, but uh, don't worry, you don't have to right now. But something to mention. Um, and that's pretty, yep, yeah, carry on, thank you. I believe that section was aimed at external factors for barriers that the government felt that, that, that we felt that we could push back to suggest that could be removed to help us be more um, efficient and remove some of those blockages to help us in the medium term, which is why it is mostly externally based. Yeah. I Oops. Yeah, let me just read out the the actual question, I suppose, that was from the original letter. The barriers preventing progress that the government can help to reduce or remove. So I don't think it's necessarily just external government. I think it could be that there are some barriers that actually could be within the orbit of TBC, which actually the, the, the government can actually help and, just pursue. So, uh, and pursue. So I think um, just maybe slightly outside the box thinking maybe on that in terms of the interpretation um, just something to reflect on I would suggest uh, does anybody oh, that's pretty much me does anybody else have any questions or comments in relation to into the relation to this report no okie dokie so we'll move on to the recommendations uh, which are so there's five, the approach, first one being the approach and timetable detailed in the financial stability plan. Number two, the budget and medium term financial planning process. Uh, number three, the contents of this report prior to consideration by cabinet. Um, number four uh, would be the productivity plan prior to submission and the full publication to the Department of Leveling Up Housing and Communities. Probably needs to be sort of worded a little bit better in terms of what the actual action is. That's just my little observation on that one. I think, I think we know what we're getting at, but 
just to be totally clear. The delegation for finalization and sign off of the productivity plan to the leader and chief executive. Um, if everyone's okay with that, who would like to move it? Councillor Wells, uh, anybody to second? Uh, Councillor Hadley? And all in favor? That's unanimous, thank you very much. That will obviously go to cabinet now. So, I think, is that it for the officers? If, if anybody wanted to leave, I believe we're, we're pretty much there. Uh, let me just go back to the, uh... yep, yeah, we're now on to working group updates. Um, yeah, so if you wanted to leave, be free. Working group updates, just something to mention on this. Of course, as what was the last uh, committee under the previous chair, uh, there was one working group, which I think was rela related to, to housing particularly, wasn't it? Um, at the moment, I've got no sort of desire, I suppose, to sort of pick that up, um, unless there's anything specific, I suppose, in nature. I think generally my, my uh, view on this would be that actually many of these issues can actually be absorbed back into the committee. Um, I don't actually think necessarily that this committee actually stays long enough um, uh, or has stayed long enough um, across the year. I think we can you know, do more with the time that we've got rather than additional meetings, you know, whether that be working group meetings or whatever. Um, but if anybody has got anything specific, um, then it is important to raise. And if it does require a working group, of course, um, we can consider it. Um, just bear in mind also on this, you know, we have got a situation where many of these pertinent issues do sort of cross over different committees. Um, and of course, we have the Housing and Homelessness Advisory Board as well. Um, we don't want to have too much replication. And um, I am in conversation, I've already been in conversation with uh, Councillor uh, Couchman uh, in a meeting yesterday with the executive about how what we can do to make it more clear and defined what the subject matters are for the relevant committee. Um, of course, you know, for example, health and well-being uh, certainly does um, consider many of the housing issues at the moment as well. So we have, have to have some more clear understanding of the direction that uh, is taken and under what committee. Um, Councillor Couchman. Um, yes, I agree. Uh, what we found is that a lot of the scrutiny items actually overlap. So it will be that we may ask certain scrutiny co committees to take a lead on it. And there may be occasions where, like the joint scrutiny budgets, um, where, where we you know, scrutinise the budget, we might have a, a joint scrutiny. Because some things are so important... Um, across, you know, if we, if we look at health and well-being, they impact on every scrutiny. Prosperity impacts on every scrutiny. I'm not saying every meeting is going to be a mixture of all three. I'm just saying that when it comes to certain issues, we've already discussed where one committee or another might wish to take the lead. Councillor Jay. Um, the scrutiny committees set their own agenda, right? So who, who's the we that you said is setting the uh, list of items there? The committee members. Yeah, I think we're all just working to, you know, we're talking about efficiency savings, I suppose, in, within the committee. But I think there's potentially some waste where there's some replication in terms of um, what the officers are having to do, attend multiple uh, committees or advisory boards. And we just need to make sure it's more streamlined and we're more aware of what, um, what pertinent issues fall into which uh, committees, scrutiny committees. If I may respond to Councillor Jay, what we're looking at is making sure that we work smarter and more efficiently. And as Councillor uh, Smith has said, we are not looking at replicating or having lots of different dry reports. We want to actually get some actions done. And it, 
if, if it means that one committee takes the lead on another and, and members in, in the committees discuss it, I mean, we do have an overlap of committee members in different committees. It might be that that happens. It might be that in discussion with officers, it might be in discussion with chairs of committees who would always come back to the relevant scrutiny committee for their uh, approval or not. Does anybody else want to come back on, on this particular issue with the working groups? Okay. As I said, um, you know, it's about scoping out what is the best um, strategy and the alignment, of course, with this. So um, to, to obviously make it a bit more clearer as well. But we do set our own agendas, of course, uh, which I will be coming on to, I suppose, with the, uh, the work plan as well later on. Um, so, yeah, moving on. Um, so forward plan i believe is next on the agenda item 12. um there's nothing that hasn't or isn't already coming to committee uh, that sort of stands out i suppose um there's some further s stuff um maybe maybe a lot further away in terms of uh some key issues around asset management um so we'll have to keep an eye on that as well i think a very particular very uh, important issue um yeah, there's nothing, nothing else. If there, if there is uh, anything that you notice uh, come up on the uh, forward plan, and you want it looked at, of course, happy to hear any opinions that you might have. Uh, you don't have to tell me right now. You can just let me know via email or contact me. Moving on, agenda item thirteen, which is the work plan, of course, for corporate scrutiny. Um, it's quite bare at the moment, um, and there was some pertinent issues that that obviously my predecessor predecessor uh, brought to the table over the course of the the last year or so. Um, so I was just going to outline some of those that I'd like to see on the agenda that I've already thought about. The one, as you might well guess, uh, that I made reference to earlier was the ICT strategy. Um, Particularly, I'm very interested in this area, and I think it's important we get it right because I don't think people realise how encompassing actually IT and IT systems actually are in terms of determining the outcomes of many areas. I mean, just even with housing um, is, is a big one, and the management of data, the use of data is vitally important, something that we can do better on. And I mentioned AI as well earlier. You know, in my view, AI should already be be being used um, by the council. I don't see it in, in mass use, and I'm talking about very simple um, sites like Copilot and all the rest of it to help inform and produce reports as well. So that would be one that would be uh, that I'd be looking to add to the work plan. Um, s secondly, to that uh, we've got the repairs. Um, now we've got repair we had previously repairs i suppose housing repairs and i think we were separated then by the leaseholder leaseholder issues as well um just very quickly on the leaseholder stuff of course we have got the second and potentially final collaborative working group uh, meeting uh next month um and that will then I might have that wrong, actually. It might be this month. <laughs> I'll have to clarify that. No, it is next month. It's 10th of July, 10th of July sorry, um, which I'll be chairing, of course. And we'll have uh, also uh, the consultants coming in as well. And it will be very much a continuation of where we were last time, but also a debrief of the report um, that they have produced. Uh, and then that will uh, encompass itself, I suppose, back into corporate scrutiny and we can talk about that further. And uh, that will be much more about sort of how we go forward with this uh, and what sort of recommendations uh, are there and also how we, how we go about implementing them as well. Um, so those are the two or three main ones. Um, if there's any more, what I plan to do, because um, I have got a list at home, but if I, have any more I'll um, also on these ones that I've spoken about I will send an email off um, 
uh, a list and a bit more detail around them as well. So what that does then is that allows you as members of the committee to uh, feedback anything that you want to see as well um, as part of this on the agenda, on the next agenda. Um, Councillor Jay, did you want to come in? Yeah, so what we've done in previous years, and I think has worked well if others on the committee agree with me, is we've, we've given ideas to the chair in the meeting for the work plan. The chair has then taken it away and discussed with officers when things might fall based on, you know, when things will be ready. And then you then come to us by email with, based on what we've thrown at you, what that agenda might look like when we agree off, offline. Because in this meeting, you know, we've got no idea yet when certain um, documents will be ready. Um, however, based on the conversation tonight and one item we've not had an update on, I think given that our input looks quite light at the moment, I think the vision and corporate plan should be on the August as well. So we get the latest position. I think the leaseholders should be on August as well. So again, we get what the outcome is and what the next steps are to scrutinize there. Um, and then I won't say what it is here because it will be an exempt item, but two commercial lease updates that um, you know we should we should know what's happening in the summer. So I think we should get them on there as well. I'll give you the exact detail offline, but they'd be exempt. But I think they should be uh, come to this committee as well. Yeah, all valid comments. I agree. Um, yeah, there's um, there's a scrutiny proposal form, of course, um, that uh, the officers certainly like to be uh, filled in um, using their template. So I, I might well attach this to the email that I'm going to send out in the coming days, and you can see how how best um, to structure basically anything that you have interest in uh, seen on the agenda. Councillor Cashman. Um, I noticed from the minutes of the previous meeting, you've got quite a bit of things going on with voids, um, and it doesn't seem to be re um, come to a resolution. There's a report or something that's got to come back from the Assistant Director Assets, um, and I think I would like if we can have an update very shortly, because otherwise these things tend to slip, and you know, and it could be November, December before we're looking at it and the situation hasn't improved. So if we could look at that and see where we're at, because from what I'm reading, if I'm reading it wrong, I apologise, but the housing voids update gives us more questions than answers. Yeah, definitely agree. Uh, there needs to be uh, more insight in that key area. Voids has obviously again become a very pertinent issue across the last year, a very emotive issue as well. Uh, I think it's also been mentioned um, in health and well-being as well um, but yes absolutely we do need to make sure that is on the, on the agenda and uh, we, we come back on that as well I can't remember if that co co relates back to those recommendations um, that I was mentioning earlier it might do it might not but we'll get some clarity on it and make sure that uh, we're doing the diligence should we say um, anybody got anything else in this particular agenda item the last one of the evening no. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I think it was a very productive, should we say, committee meeting tonight. Uh, thank you to all the officers that attended and um, all the reports and uh, material that you've been able to produce. Um, much appreciated. Sorry if um, it seems like we've taken, taken. Uh, you know, we don't wish to have a take. You know, hope you don't, hopefully you don't take it as, um, as sort of any kind of um, ill will or whatever. But obviously, we want to be robust as possible. Uh, that's what we're here for, of course, to scrutinise. Okay, so we'll just end the meeting now at uh, 7.33 p.m. Thank you.